Welcome back, I'm Enigma Severus and today we are going to look at the movie Twisters. Well, this movie was not as I would have expected. Um, it's not very good, uh, just to put a damper on everything for you. There are most likely going to be a number of people and a number of critics who are going to say that this movie was a great sequel, but it honestly wasn't. Um, this is probably one of those um, sequels that should not have been made. I really want to believe that after Maverick 2 had premiered and a number of people became more interested in the actor Glenn Powell, I feel like someone at a dinner party said, hey, you know, Glenn Powell looks like a, a new and up-and-coming Bill Paxson. Hey, you remember Bill Paxson was amazing in that movie Twister? Yeah, you know, let's make a secondary movie starring Glenn Powell, and let's have the protagonist or the person who has Bill Paxson's natural ability to discern when a twister is coming, let's put that inside the woman, and let's have Glenn Powell be the, you know, the good guy, the guy that has all of his priorities in order. Let's make that the movie for Twisters 2. Honestly, I really want to say this is somewhat of a dumpster fire type movie. Let me just explain. Um, the first reason, uh, the young lady is the protagonist. And for me personally, her reasoning behind what she is doing is understood in the beginning. However, it becomes fairly stupid for her reasoning to take up storm chasing again an older friend of the young lady contacts her once again and says hey we need you to come back and be a storm chaser and she explains no i'm not doing that again and he explains well you know you're the only one that can help us and then he introduces her when she comes back to chase storms and he introduces her to his team who apparently have PhDs and are from NASA and all of these genius type people. Okay, then why do we need you, the young lady, on this team? You know, the reasoning behind her return is that she has some uncanny natural ability to do things. And that is why she must return and be on this team. So, with this in mind we can immediately see a number of outlines and scenes which are stolen from the original movie. Now, for those of you that don't remember, in the original movie, uh, Bill Paxson is coming out and he is finding his ex-wife, who is Helen Hunt. And Helen Hunt has not signed um, all of these divorce papers that she needs to sign in order for him to get married. And so... Obviously, we see that Helen Hunt is stalling the process in order to somewhat convince Bill Paxson to stick around and really see the project which they have been working on, which is Dorothy. Now, then we encounter the villain of the movie, so to speak. And this is, another man, this is another man that has gone out and got himself corporate sponsors. So when we see this new movie, Twisters they switch some of these storylines around. Now, there is no actual um, divorce subject. Rather, there is a different modification to the situation. And so, again, these things are taken from the original movie. Um, scenes are taken from the original movie. Five or six scenes. Um, learning backstory, learning motivation. The problem is, is that this movie is following some sort of an outline which just is too easily identifiable. The protagonist, Addie, she is the Bill Paxson of this new movie. She's the one that has this uncanny talent and she's able to understand these readings without actually doing any actual research. So the movie producers just give her lines to speak. And then Glenn Powell is the basically match for her. Like he is the one that also reads 
the signs of the weather and is able to do the same thing. So now these two are going to team up and they're going to complete with this project and the whole issue is is trying to understand a twister more so that they can have um, an ability to do something very specific for this twister. And so it's just very stupid. I mean, honestly, I could go on for about 20 minutes and go into detail about just how dumb the movie is. And I might actually come up with another movie breakdown to demonstrate to you the comparison that we see between the original Twister and this movie, Twisters, and how they steal everything from the original movie in order for you to feel some sort of nostalgia for the original movie which was a great success i'm sorry but this is not the way to go about it not to mention they're still trying to put the young woman as something extra special which is not needed to do you don't need to do it you are as hollywood again making really crappy movies and trying to bring back nostalgia in a horribly stupid way the movie producers themselves don't even care why the characters are doing what they're doing. The guy that tries to convince the girl to come back and chase storms, he explains it to her and then he completely goes against his own explanation later on in the movie. And then the girl wants to give this politically positive message inside the movie. And then we're all supposed to be overly sympathetic for these rigid, shallow characters who have no substance whatsoever none of us care ultimately i did not care for these characters there was no genuine loss there was no genuine understanding this is the massive problem with hollywood the massive problem with hollywood is they don't know how to convince their audience to actually give a damn about the characters that they've created they just put the character on the big screen and then they spoon feed you the information of what you need to care about and then they start creating unnecessary and non-dangerous drama that you know the person is not going to die in and then they expect you to feel like this over sense of joy in the movie that there was a survivor or that the person was able to overcome some crappy obstacle that they put inside the movie. It's just a shallow, crappy movie. This is a highly budgeted, crappy, B-rated movie. Ultimately, this deserves a two. It's just a crappy movie. If you really want to enjoy a good movie, go back and watch Twister the original, where people actually looked like they got really dirty and looked like their life was actually in danger. In the second movie, no. I felt no interest whatsoever. The way that they displayed social media, the way that they did everything, just looked really crappy. It looked like they wasted way too much money, and they put Glenn Powell in there, who got an easy paycheck, and everybody else was forgettable. Everybody. There was nothing in that movie that genuinely made me feel like there was any interest whatsoever. It's a crappy movie. Um, you want to watch it, go watch it. But ultimately, I would not waste money on it. I wouldn't buy the Blu-ray. I wouldn't do anything with it. I would, I would genuinely um, have the producers create a letter apologizing for them destroying the 1996 film Twister. And just as another note, there was no comedy in it. Like, look at this scene. This scene right here where they see a cow cross the, you know, cross in front of them on the road. That was a hilarious scene in the original movie. There is no hilarious scenes in this movie. The people these days do not have any slightest idea on how to make a hilarious scene without having people dialogue. Make something funny where there's silence. See, if you really want to understand how to do comedy, go back and watch some of these 80s films like Ghostbusters. Watch Twister. Go back and watch uh, Shaun of the Dead. Go back and watch, you know, a number of different movies that knew how to write comedy into the movie because they put thinking into it. Okay, let me uh, give you a PS and then I'm, I'm done. Just as a PS message, my video editing skills, I am going to be as lazy as the producers and I'm not even going to do much with this video editing. Have a good day.